Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. You know, in the past I've talked about a number of different types of circuit breakers, and I do have a video on my channel about different kinds, uh, sort of an overview, but there's a few that I still haven't had a chance to really dig into and show you how they work. And I want to take care of that today. I want to show you how two circuit breakers from NCE operate and give you some tips on using those. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Before we do get started though, I do have one thing that I want to pass back to you, and that's about descriptions. Now, I get a lot of questions from people asking me where they can find certain website addresses, where they can find parts for some of the circuits that I've shown on here, and things of that nature. And I try to always remind people that I put this kind of stuff in the description for the video. However, there appears to be a lot of people who have no idea what a description is or where they can find it. A description is literally what the name implies. It is a text description of what is covered in that specific video. And that's a place where a lot of YouTube creators put things like website addresses and parts list and anything like that, companies where you can buy stuff, they'll put it in the description because, you know, it's just a lot easier for you to go read the description than it is to try to copy it off of a screen. Now, where is the description located? That seems to be a problem with a lot of people. They have no idea what it is or where it is. Now, first off, let me point out that if you're using a Roku app on your TV, you cannot access the description. So that's one limitation right off I'll let you know about. However, it is available through, the, through your browsers and through apps uh, on laptops, desktops, mobile devices such as iPhones and other cell phones, as well as things like the iPad and Android tablets. So it's a simple matter though, once you find out where they are to access them, and then you have access to all kinds of information that is not often given in the videos themselves. Now I'm not going to waste everybody's time in this video showing you how to access the description in every type of browser uh, and on every type of iPad or Android device or whatever. There are plenty of videos already on YouTube for that. So all you need to do is go to the top of the screen on the YouTube channel and click on that little search button. That's the one that the icon that looks like a magnifying glass. And when that search comes up, type in the word description, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T-I-O-N, and then hit the go button. And you will get a list of the various videos that exist on descriptions. And there's a lot of them out there. They will come up, they'll show you how to create a description, tell you what it is, and tell you where to find it. So please, if you don't know what a description is or how to access it, take a moment to actually look at that video and learn something else about how YouTube works. Okay, let's move on and take a look at the NCE circuit breakers that I have to show you here. And for that, I'm gonna zoom in down here on the desktop. Now, NCE makes two types of circuit breakers that I'm aware of. They're, the first one here is called their CP6, and this one here is their EB1. So what I wanna do is let's take a look at the CP6 first, and then we'll take a look at how this one works. Now, the CP6 is NCE's simplest circuit breaker or power breaker, whatever you want to call it, available. And it basically is six separate ballast lamps. So each one of these here is a lamp that's typically used in overhead in cars, things of that nature. Now, each one of these bulbs here is rated at three quarters of an amp. And the way that these work is you simply run your output power from a command station or a booster of some kind. This is a Digitrack Zephyr here. And I've just got the, the uh, track feeder wires going into this jumper, jumper seven here on the circuit board. And it says right here on the circuit board, DCC power in. So, you know, it's very simple to set it up. 
And you basically have two screw terminals right here where you can just insert the two wires, screw it down tight, and you've got power going in. Now, what do you use this for? Well, it has six separate outputs here, one for each one of these bulbs. And you can therefore connect this to six separate power blocks on your model railroad. And that way you can isolate individual sections of the, of the model railroad from one another so that if the power goes off in one, it does not affect the power in the others. And the way that works is the same as with ballast lamps because that's what these are. And I've done videos on ballast lamps. I've done videos on the subject of power management and various types of circuit breakers. And I will put links to those above me and at the end of the video. So make sure Watch the end of the video in order to get those links because they will be there on the end page. I will also put a few up here above me as well. Now, the idea is it's sort of like the circuit breakers in your home. If you go down and open up the circuit breaker box in your basement or garage or wherever it's located, you will have a bunch of individual circuit breakers, some rated at 15 amps, some 20 some 35, even greater values. And the way they work is, if you have a short on one of them or you overload one circuit in your house, then that circuit breaker trips and it doesn't affect all the others and it prevents a fire. Now, with the CP6, each one of these light bulbs acts as a circuit breaker. Now, the thing that is important is each one of these is only rated at three quarters of an amp. So that means that when trains are running on your layout, they cannot exceed three quarters of an amp in that block that this particular bulb is protecting. And if you get up to three quarters of an amp, they're going to light up and power is going to be shut off. So that's basically, it will think it's seeing a short circuit. Now one thing that you can do is, you can also purchase replacement light bulbs and they sell these, NCE sells these, and they also give you the uh, actual part number in the manual that comes with this uh, circuit board. But each one of these is rated at 1.75 amps. So you can increase the amperage within each block by using these others. And you could actually mix and match. You could have one block that's three quarters of an amp. You can have another block that's 1.75 amps. But that's the limitation you're limited to either 0.75 or 1.75 amps for each block. So if you can live with that limitation, these are a very good, very simple method for providing protection to your different blocks on your model railroad. Now, how do they work? Well, as I showed you, the power goes in here, and then there are six different screw terminal jumpers here at the bottom. And I've already taken and wired one set of wires and connected it to this track. So watch what happens when I take a piece of metal and place it across the track. You can see this light bulb comes on and I'll show you power goes off. There. So let's see what the voltage is here. You can see we've got 13.6 to 13.7 volts on the track. Now watch what happens when I put the piece of metal across. The light comes on and everything goes dark on the amp meter because there's nothing getting through to the track. Everything is being stopped here by these bulbs. And I talked about how these work. I talked about how ballast lamps work in the past in the video I did on ballast lamps. And as I said, I'll put a link to that either above me here or at the end of the video. So you can take a look at how those work. So basically then, Power goes in here, power can go out to six different blocks, and it can be either three quarters of an amp or 1.75 amps per block. So it's that simple. There's no programming. All you have to do is hook it up, plug it in, and go. And it will protect your command station and booster from overloads, and it will prevent other blocks from being shut down when one block has a short circuit in it. And that's basically how power management works. 
Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Okay, so now let's take a look at the more complicated one, and that is their EB1 circuit breaker. And just like on the first one, the power comes out of the command station or the booster, and it goes into these two terminals here. Okay. And they are marked DCC. So the DCC comes in here, and then you've got two terminals over here marked track or TRK. So the power goes out and is connected to the track at this end. So basically then, it acts as a circuit breaker in line between your booster and your track and the block that you are protecting. Now, the important thing is, this only protects one block. However, it has a lot more capabilities. For one thing, it can be set at anywhere from two and a half to eight amps for the trip current. And that's important because once you get up to a larger model railroad and you're gonna be running a lot more trains, that 0.75 amps and 1.75 amp value might be too much of a limitation for you with the CP6. With the EB1, you can go from two and a half up to eight amps. So this one has a much greater flexibility in that respect. You can run a lot more trains within each block and you can use it with larger uh, scale locomotives like O scale and S scale and HO scale and not just N scale. Now, the other thing about this, and the way that you set the trip current is with these three shunts here. And basically, there are two connections, two wires under each one of these. And depending on whether or not both pins are connected or both wires are connected together using these little jumpers, uh, it gives you different amperages. So right now, this is set for four amps. And I'm using it with a five amp SB5 on the module. So that's going to protect that bolt, that particular module, and it's going to allow it to use up to four amps. Now, if I have a short, it's going to shut down and protect the booster or the command station, as well as the locomotives within the block. And it's going to keep trying periodically to reattach power to the circuit. So it's going to remove power from one wire going to the track, and at regular intervals, it's going to try to reconnect that wire and provide power to the track. If it sees a short, it's going to stop again. So it's going to keep doing that over and over and over again. And that's the way most electronic circuit breakers work. With the CP6, the light bulb stays on until you fix the short or until you turn power off uh, at your command station or booster. So with this one, it's going to automatically shut power off, but keep trying to reattach power at regular intervals. Now, what else is available here? Well, there's another one of these little shunts right here, or jumpers, uh, at the top of the board, and that's for setting things up, because there are a few CVs on here that you can set up and that you can program. Also, you can program an address in here. And this can be very useful once you have it set to a specific address because if this board shuts down and you want to turn it back on and it hasn't turned itself back on automatically, then you can use your handheld throttle to use accessory commands to turn it back on remotely. So that's one thing you can do. You can also set this up using programming so that you can use a push button to turn it back on. And if it's set up that way, once it trips, once it sees a short circuit and cuts power off, it will stay off until you push a push button attached to these two terminals right here. It also has two terminals here where you can attach an LED. And that way you could put an LED on your fascia and you would know that power in block one has shorted out because that light will come on. In addition to the fact, everything's gonna stop in that block. And if you have the manual reset, uh, programmed, it will stay off until you push the reset button or until you issue a command using your throttle to turn power back on. So that is another piece of flexibility. Now there are several other CVs that you can 
optionally program. But 99% of you are never going to need them. Uh, they are covered quite well in the manual, and they allow you to set things like the amount of time that the power is off. They allow you to set the trip speed, or the speed with which it shuts power off, and to program the manual reset and whether or not that's going to be operating or not. So those are the kind of things that you can do. They also have an even more complicated setup uh, that they basically show you what it does, but tell you that it's for the technically inclined who need to experiment. It's also something that you could use if you run into problems of it operating or not operating properly with your track configuration or your equipment on your model railroad. So it does have a lot of flexibility. However, it comes set up at two and a half amps as the default. And for most of you, all you're gonna need to do is connect the two wires in, the two wires out, and you'll be ready to operate. That's that simple, easy to use. The other things that I've just talked about are options available to you. Okay, I've just turned the power on and hopefully you can see that this little red light here it looks like it's yellow on the uh, screen, but it's red to me. Uh, that is the pilot light, basically. It tells you when the board is turned on. So let's go ahead and we'll put a piece of metal across the track here, and let's see what happens this time. Okay, so looking at this, we still have 13.6, 13.7 volts on the track. If I short it out, you can see power goes off. Now, I remove it, power comes back on automatically. So it's that straightforward and easy to use. So basically then, you have two very good options available to you from NCE. So, if you have very limited needs and are happy with the amperage limitations of the CP6, then this might be the one for you. And the great thing is, it's easy to set up, no programming is needed, and you can provide power to six separate blocks on your model railroad using this device. However, if your needs are more complicated and you need to control or operate more locomotives within each block, then you might want to consider this EB1 as one potential because it allows you to provide anywhere from two and a half to eight amps power to each block and you can program it for special circumstances. If you run into problems on your model railroad, you can also provide a manual reset button if you'd rather have that instead of the automatic reset. And you can attach the remote LED so you could know which block on your layout is shorted. However, I will tell you right up that the cost of this is about the same as this. So it's gonna cost you a lot more to provide power for six blocks than it would with this guy. But that's one of the realities of model railroading. The more complicated your, your track layout is and the more power you need, the more it's going to cost you to protect it. So it's a trade-off. You know, you make the decisions. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Hopefully I've given you enough information for you to decide whether or not you can use these two types of circuit breakers from NCE. And you know, they're comparable to a lot of the others that are available on the market. They just have different options. And that's something you'll need to take a look at is to compare the different types of circuit breakers and decide which ones you need for your model railroad. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and we'll see you here again next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.